stato Koji, Yamada Kenji, Assista Tutteriana Maneja, Assista Koji, Assista Mente Ovinix. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to Japan. This is the B League and the battle in the Central Conference between Yokohama B Corsairs and Sanin Neo Phoenix. We're in the Yokohama Buntai Arena, the home of the Corsairs. And, well, it hasn't been the season that they had hoped for. Remember, they raised the bar last season, making it to the playoffs, fueling hopes of a return this season. And it's been tough sledding, but I think it says more about the competition in the B League uh, than it says about uh, this Yokohama B Corsairs team. They're still good. They're still potent. But there are a lot of good teams, and to make it into the B-League, you just have to play at that high level week in, week out. You have to avoid injuries. You have to have a little luck along the way. And here are the standings. You can see that San In and the Central are up at the top, 41-10 and 10 already have clinched their place in the playoffs. That's what that red star signifies, and first place, in fact. And... Uh, Yokohama a little bit further afield now. In the wild card race, Yokohama B Corsairs uh, are 11th, still with a chance, but they need to win out. They need to win the rest of their games. And I think you and everybody else knows it's not going to happen this season, but they want to come out today and give their fans a thrill. And you can see that when it comes to the, uh, to the crowds here, they don't care. They still show up. And you can see the recent results from San and Nia Phoenix how they've been faring. There they are. So most recently on April 10th, rolling to a big win over Toyama Grouses. And uh, it's just been one win right after the other. Of course, on March 30th, they did lose. Uh, but more times than not, uh, they've been racking up the wins. March 30th, falling 82 to 75 to Sendai, but then they bounced back and won 100 to 81. So they've won four out of their last five. Wanted to highlight the play of uh, their exciting guard, Sasaki, coming out. 11.8 points, 39% shooting, 21, just over 21 minutes a game. Three point one assists for him as well. Yokohama B Corsairs, meanwhile, and that just kind of shows you how they have really struggled to get results. Uh, even splitting last week to Ibiraki Robots, uh, they won the first one 94-93. Won that one by the skin of their teeth, and they lost the the following day 95-94. Then in midweek, uh, they fell, uh, losing at home. So, yes, they ha they still have. This man right here, Yuki Kawamura, and his numbers are really good. Japan's starting point guard, MVP last season. And oftentimes, you know, for him, he's young, he's still learning the game. Uh, but he can't do it all on his own, even though sometimes it feels like he can do it all on his own. Uh, but. Is he scratching the surface of his potential? Has he reached it? I suggest the the, uh, the former. He's going to get a lot better. So for San and New Phoenix, 30 Ravena from the Philippines has been terrific this season. Yante Mayton, Cody Clark, Sota Aura, all on that deep and talented roster. Is it good enough to win the title? Well, that remains to be seen, but they're going to start with Ravena, Mayton, Clark, Aura, and Sasaki who we highlighted at the start. And you look at the David Dzinski coming out, key man in this team. Also, Kawa is a big man. Yamauchi, big player. Yu coming off the bench. Ota. So Coach Ono has done a nice job. Experienced coach. 
He's got his team playing good basketball. Now the lights are going to lower so we can have Yokohama come out. Here are the uh, comparative stats season all looking at uh, where these teams are doing well. And you can see far superior. I mean, just 46%, 46.6% to 42.8% field goal percentage. Even the three-point shooting is better. 354 free throw shooting better. So it's... But another thing for Yokohama is, hey, you know, you're going to be playing in the B1 next year. Regardless of how this season goes, you're not going to be relegated. And there's a lot to be excited about. It'll be interesting to see what they do in the closed season to get ready for next year. Uh, but these are the previous meetings. You can see Sanin winning by just one and Yokohama winning uh, the other one. So they have the capacity to come out and beat great teams or good teams or the title challengers. Uh, but you got to be able to put it all together on a week by week basis. And when you, when you have those narrow defeats like that one, 94, 93 defeat, those are the reasons why you don't, or you end up not making it to the playoffs. So again, they do have a chance, but it's not likely. So exciting times here. Yokohama got a couple of really good Filipino internationals. 30 Ravena, Kai Soto needs no introduction, but uh, Jared Utoff, Tanaka, Kawamura, Sugiura Soto, Nishino, Oliver Mori, who's played well of late, Kai King, Matsuzaki, Sudo, and Josh Scott, who hasn't seen himself this season. And I'm only guessing it's because of uh, some injuries, but also getting a little bit older. It's going to be Utah. Uh, Kawamura, Soto, Oliver, and Sudo in the starting five. And Kawamura and Kai Soto have really teamed up. Seeing a lot more lob passes to Soto in recent games. Devin Oliver, of course, very explosive player. Sudo had the game winner last weekend uh, against Ibiraki in the game in the first game. And Coach Aoki. So again, this team, Yokohama, made it to the postseason one year ago. Uh, but this year, it has not been as kind to them. And maybe they've dropped off a little bit. Maybe the league has gotten a little bit better. Well, everybody will have their opinions. But when Yokohama makes it, to the semifinals and they're one of the top four teams essentially and then lose to the eventual champions it tells you what kind of season they had last year that was always going to be hard to follow up so again the starting fives Sudo, Yutoff, Soto, Oliver and Kawamura on the left and then you've got Cody Clark, Mayton, 30 Ravena. Uh, for San and Nia Phoenix. Sota Aura as well. And Sasaki. Number 24. And maybe, maybe you know, looking down the road in the playoffs, the determining factor for this team is going to be the play of the guards. Everybody... You know you're gonna you're gonna be facing some great teams in the postseason, and you got to bring it every single game. There can be no let off. So for San In, and the other thing is, you know how good Cody Clark is. There have been a couple of games where he's had some slow starts, or hasn't been at his best, and Mayton as well. So I still think there are question marks hovering over the San and Neo Phoenix team, but. 
Uh, there's no doubt about it. They deserve their record. They've been, you know, you 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 are what your record says you are, and they are going to finish first in the Central. So they have had a great season. Uh, but you've got the regular season and you got the playoffs, and those are two very different beasts. And we shall see how things go for them the rest of the way. Still got some play to go in the regular season. This is one of them. Yokohama B Corsairs needing a miracle to get a wild card. They win the opening tip wearing the uh, dark uniforms today and attacking the basket to the right on your screen. Kawamura fell down. I wasn't sure he was able to, Oh, boy, he slipped a couple of times. His feet's slipping all over the place. Oliver and the pass to the left. And I think Kawamura, you can see he's investigating the floor. And meanwhile, Oliver... called for the foul we have to have another look at that but look at this there's some the bigger concern is the moisture and you got Colin Murray bending over I hope he hasn't hurt himself so they're gonna especially as it relates to Colin Murray I think the entire country needs to make sure that he's Feeling good this time of year. The Olympics just around the corner. Tom Hovass will be having him in training camp and getting him ready for the men's Olympic basketball tournament in Paris. But right now, I think they just want to double check and make sure everything is okay with the floor. Where again, that for whatever reason, we hope we don't have a leak somewhere. Devin Oliver still a little bit upset that they called a foul on him at the start of the game. You never like to pick up a foul in the first 24 seconds of the game. That's the first game I've done all season where you've had a delay right at the start just to inspect the floor to make sure everything is okay. Look at the past years for San Antonio Phoenix where they've been as a club, of course, 2016, 2017, that was a memorable season. But look at this year. 804 winning percentage. They have really, just as perhaps Yokohama haven't maybe lived up to some expectations, they had sent in, have definitely surpassed expectations with their terrific run under coach Aoki. Okay, well, hopefully we're not going to have any more issues with uh, moisture on the court. There's nothing more dangerous than having some moisture on the court because you'll slip, you lose control, and that's when you can break, a, break an arm or injure your knee. Okay, basketball has been inbounded, and Santa Nia Phoenix bring it up the floor. Sasaki gets it over to Ora. Now back outside to Cody Clark from up top, and Cody Clark knocks down the first one. Kind of playing his best basketball of his career, it feels like. Clark, 31 years of age. I'm sure he will be raising eyebrows, not just here, but around the world. Here's Kai Soto catching it and putting it up and in. And right... That little sequence there, you can see the difference between he and Mayton. Mayton's just big and strong. And you get Kai Soto, who's a lot taller and more wiry. He gets the rebound over to Devin Oliver, who wants to get up the floor quickly. And he is fouled by 30 Ravena. This will be a nice test today for 30 Ravena, going up against somebody like 
Kyle Murray. He'll want to go out and really have a big game so he can play against the best. But Freddie Ravana's numbers have really been good this year. He's really stepped up. One of, one of the reasons why San and New Phoenix have won 41 games, no doubt about it. Kawamura. Oliver. Driving in, and the foul has been called. Sasaki gets an N1. Well, if you're pseudo, you want to keep him in front of you. And Sasaki just got into attack mode and went right past him. Somebody must have told Sasaki that we were highlighting him before the game because he has wasted no time coming out and showing us his wares. He makes the free throw, and it's a 6-2 lead for San In. Kai Soto. And the ball is blocked. He's fouled though, however, by Mayton. So two free throws coming. Well, the ball don't lie, Yante Mayton. He makes the first. Okay, Soto misses the second. He'll be with the Philippines at the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament. They get three points down the floor. Kai Soto, well, when is it good to miss a free throw when you know you're going to get the offensive rebound and get a bucket? So they close the gap to one. Mayton trying to post up Soto. Here's Clark spinning, turning, and scoring. Great start for Cody Clark. Three point look. And just like that, pseudo. Here's Sasaki. He puts it up. Chance for Yokohama to take the lead. The Corsairs. Kawamura. And the ball doesn't fall Clark what was he doing he left his feet obviously to make a pass here's Sudo again you can count that that's two threes now for Sudo streaky player get him the ball while he's hot Aura passes it back outside to Clark puts it up from deep Nice job, Soto, with the quick pass up ahead to Kawamura, who pulls it up. Now Oliver catches it into the corner. Soto, will it be three in a row? Oliver with the rebound. Oh, Oliver. And great job, Kai Soto. He has come to play today, folks. Kai Soto. Here's a little handoff. Over the shoulder pass to Mayton. Kai Soto's averaging 12.2 points, 5.9 rebounds, but he's had some big scoring games. Pseudo again, that is his third three. He is in the rhythm. Somebody needs a timeout. You better start guarding him. He could, he could easily hit five or six in a row, although he's hit three out of four. Here's Cody Clark again, trying to match him. And Cody Clark, after hitting the first one, hasn't knocked down another three. 
Now the pass to Oliver. Good play. Yuki Kawamura. And all of a sudden, this Yokohama B Corsairs team is on fire. And that leads to a timeout for San Andrea Phoenix. Who right now are in the ashes. Trailing by eight points. They might be first in the central. But you got to play all 40 minutes of every game and keep proving over and over again that you've got the better team. And right now, Yokohama playing with a sense of urgency. So timeout on the court. So coming out of the timeout, Ura puts it up and misses. Offensive rebound. Soto Ura again. Here's Mayton. And Mayton give him an M1, fouled by Kai Soto. Dudzinski also in the game now for San and New Phoenix, so that complicates things. One of the better six men in the league. Well, Kai Soto has the length, but I think if Mayton is going to be able to establish position like that, he will more times than not go up. And I feel right now this is a, a big swing as Sugiyota comes in, but it's more Josh Scott. He's a real warrior, seasoned campaigner. And this is a different type of challenge for Yanti Mayton, but probably one that he will, uh, will look forward to more. Josh Scott just has not been 100% healthy this season. You can see it in his play. And I think it's a real tribute, real tribute to, to Josh Scott that he continues to kind of soldier on. Here he is catching the inbounds pass, hands it off. Because Josh Scott, where he's supposed to help you, it's his physicality, his work on the boards, you know, the putbacks, the defense, and it just looks physically like he's not 100%. Here is Oliver. They pass it around. Sudo, will it be another? Not this time, but look at Oliver getting there for the rebound, playing with such great energy. Kawamura over to Sudo again. You can, oh boy, I thought you could count that, but no, it didn't drop. Unlucky, but well played by Yokohama. Aura. Oh, Mayton's going to show us what he's got. And that's what he's got. That's why he operates down low. That's not his game. That was a little bit out of character, really, for Mayton. Everything's going well. You don't need to go down and put up a, a three early in the shot clock. And now Sudo, or Sugiota, rather. I think that was Sugiota. Here's the offensive rebound. They battle away. And Scott scrapping. And that was Maiden coming from behind, knocking it away. Dudzinski for three. And finally, Scott able to rebound the miss. Comura calls the play. Kai King. And ready. Here's Kawamura. Stays on his feet. Now he drives right down behind the back pass. Three-point attempt for Sudo. You, oh, boy, that would have been on the highlight reel had he made that one.
Zuzinski, and just like that, it's a two-point game. Yamauchi now in the game for Sanin as well. Fan favorite, real, really gets after the opponent. Look at him reaching in. Not nearly as quick as Kawamura, but he has plenty of savvy. Cody Clark coming in, Maiden going out. Also, Kenta Mori, who I think has really played some, some good basketball of late. And, you know, you, you see the emergence of Kawamura, and Mori, the captain, sees his playing time reduced, and it can be awfully difficult to figure out how you're going to contribute. But it feels like he's a, regained some confidence. Here's Kai King. In the game two, number 23, Kenta Mori. So San Ann can reclaim the lead if they can knock down the three-pointer. Sasaki drives in, ties it. It's been all San Ann Neo Phoenix since they took that timeout. Osakawa also in the game right now, number 29, guarding Kai King. Sugiota for three. Good job. Excellent work, Josh Scott. Sugiota a little bit slow to the basketball. He needs to be a little bit quicker. Clark, Hosokawa for three. And that's it, folks. San and New Phoenix go in front. A big run after the timeout. And now the timeout has been called by Yokohama. There he is, Hosokawa coming off the bench. It's a real luxury to have a, a veteran sharpshooter coming off the bench. Maybe not as quick defensively, but you know what you're going to get from him. Just like with Sudo, he got hot. Now he's not. He's on the bench. And, you know, a lot of it is, is about depth. You know, how good are your guys coming off the bench? And, again, this is where... When you have Dzinski coming out, you got Hosokawa, uh, you know you got good, and Yamauchi, you got really good players, reliable players coming out that have been in the battles. Utah has yet to really, oh boy, that is just a terrible pass. Kai King, even a bounce pass, but they knew it was coming and turned it over cheaply. Cody Clark. Kai King can't afford to turn the basketball over, have empty possessions. There he is now driving into the back. Oh, passes it up over to Sugiyota. Wide open three. And Sugiyota has to be able to knock down those shots as well. Kai King with the rebound. Well, they're getting some open looks. They're not making. Here's Scott. He puts it on the deck. He puts it up. And there's just a lack of offense. And really, with Utah out there, you know, he's your probably your primary option, and he's not even getting a touch on offense. Find Utah. And Yamauchi picks up the foul. A little bit slow. Getting in front of his man.
New checks into the game. Kentamori wide open for three. Another miss. Utah gets it. So they should have the last possession. And surely Utah has to get a look, get a look at the basket from somewhere, anywhere. Well, it's going to be another three, a long rebound. He took it maybe a little too fast, but they escaped because Cody Clark's attempt from half court grazes the net. Just not much offense coming in the latter part of that first quarter for Yokohama. It's San and Neo Phoenix leading it 21 to 18. So coming out of the change of quarters and Cody Clark goes down, tumbles, but is okay. Well, that was a terrific pass, terrific opportunity, and Kai Soto doesn't get it to fall. Aura misses the three. Jasinski with the ball batted to him, and it is just one-way traffic right now. San in near Phoenix. I think it's a 17-0 run. Okay, so they trailed 18 to 10 with 522 remaining after Devin Oliver's jump shot. And since that point, so a six minute drought for Yokohama. And another miss. So it's a 15 0 run. Or a catches. Now it's a 17 0 run. And another timeout called by Yokohama. Let's go! Go, go, Pico! Go, go, Pico! 
where the roster is deeper, more talented. And that has been evident. And really, you feel like San End are just bigger. The way they're competing on the glass. And right now, they're going for the knockout punch. You can see, putting on some full court pressure. Here's Utah. Puts it up from the elbow. We're not getting any looks for Utah. Any good looks. Three pointer from Zajinski. Nope. There's Utah battling away. And it's going to go back over to Yokohama. From the corner, and finally, their first bucket in almost seven minutes by Kai King and great defense, Utah. So that gives them a little bit of hope. Here's Soto again driving in. Ball knocked out of his hands by you. Sotor gets it deep and draws the foul. Well, that's a very generous call, really, but I guess there is contact, and they think that Machino fouled him. I didn't think so. So the first one's good for Sota Orta, 28-21. So that was Kai King that made the three-pointer to make it 27-21 and give Yokohama just a little bit of hope. Josh Scott comes back into the game. Kai so, Soto takes the seat. It's King and Utah in the low post. And Calmer is passed just right into the hands of Mayton. Nice spin. 30 Ravena making his presence felt. First bucket for him. Karamura from the wing, Kai King. That's two threes for Kai King. Well, to say the three-point shot has been important for Yokohama B Corsairs would be the understatement of the day. I mean, that's the only thing that's keeping them in it right now. That miss. Machino hands it off to Kawamura. I'd love Kawamura to knock down a three. Here he is, right on cue, and he's got a chance for a four-point play. There was just something that didn't seem right as they're coming down the floor, thinking, well, when is Colin Murray going to take a three? And here he is, gets a little bit of space, huge shot. And Sotora, you never want to foul the jump shooter, you never want to foul the three-point shooter. So Karamura now with a chance to close the gap to three points. Yamauchi, the veteran, back in the game. So indeed, it's that rare four-point play. I mean, you see it more and more, but still it's rare. I don't know if I'm contradicting myself when I say it, but I think you get the drift. Probably won't see it again today. 
Here's Maiden. Oh, gets rejected by Utah, but then the ball goes off of Utah. A little bit unlucky, and Utah today is kind of pulled back offensively and just really focused on defense and rebounding. He's done a nice job. Look at this. Yamauchi did he get off in time. And when he's the only player on the court during that run, when it was about a, they, they reeled off about 10 in a row. That's when I was frustrated that Utah wasn't getting looks. But now, here's Kai King, another one. Utah is really contributing in other ways. There's Cody Clark driving. Look at Utah again. Or no, that was Sugiota, excuse me. Here's Utah. Now he's going to go in. And Sasaki whistled for the foul. That's pretty good defense by Sasaki. Well, it felt like Yokohama were going to be run out of the gym just a few minutes ago, but here they are hanging around, coming back. Closing the gap to just one. You're going to hear a loud roar if they can get a stop and they go down and score and reclaim the lead. Sasaki and ball. Going right at Kai King, turns it over. Kai King in the open floor has got to make the right decision. And, and Colin Murrow is saying, how in the world is that not an unsportsmanlike? Was Yamauchi even attempting to play the ball? Well, they could challenge it. He picks up his third foul. I don't know if it was worth it for Yamauchi. I don't know why he can miss that foul. He basically mugged Kawamura. Looks like Sasaki's got a little bit of uh, pain. So Sotaura and 30 Ravane and now the backcourt, along with Hosokawa. Here's Kawamura. Machino, oh boy, just has it picked. Sotaura is so good with his hands. Dzinski in the paint and Buendachino. You can't turn the basketball over cheaply. You've got to know where you are on the court. Get rid of the ball. Give it to somebody else. You either make your move or pass it to somebody else. So timeout. So it looks like Sasaki, Sasaki may have injured his foot, maybe a calf. His shoe is off.
Uh, Kings knocked down a couple of threes. He remains in the game. Yokohama 6 of 20 from three-point range. Oliver comes back in. And great defense to Zinski, knocking it away. He's played well off the bench. He's got seven points. Kawamura. Kawamura, Oliver, gets it off just in the nick of time. He yells short. Scott there, Kai King, wide open. Good box out down low by Hosokawa on Oliver. Soto Ura left wide open and he misses. Just three makes, three of 17 from deep for the visitors. Nice bounce pass, Oliver. They get it to the corner. Three point attempt. And boy, 30 Ravena just had blinding speed that time. Went right past, right through the defense. Look at this. Just blows right past Matsuzaki. Hosokawa. Coming off a screen, friendly bounce on the rebound, the long rebound after the miss, three, which often happens. Kawamura tried to stick with Ura. Down low, Maiden puts it on the ground, gets it back, and he is fouled by Matsuzaki. So Yanti Mathan trying to make it a four-point lead. Oh, well short. Makes one of two. Here's Kawamura. No blue shirts for the rebound. Ora, he gets blocked by Kawamura, who saves it in bounds, but it goes to Dudzinski. Nathan fouled again. So Kai King is going to sit down and Utah returns to the floor. Yanti Mating going back to the free throw line. Also Sudo returns for Yokohama. And Kai Soto. Well, the way Yanti Mayton is shooting his free throws right now, it might not be a bad option just to foul him. And Devin Oliver finally able to get the basketball, but 
Two and a half minutes remaining. Kawamura gets it to Soto. He's kind of bumped. No call. Utah has it. Pass down low again to Oliver, and he's fouled. And one. That's just great hustle from Oliver. And good eyes by Colin Murray to spot his teammate open. Look, heads up always, just whips it down low. And Oliver just says, ring it up. So Yu comes back into the game. He's played just under three minutes. And Oliver makes the free throw. So it's a one point game again. Boy, if Yokohama were able to take the lead before halftime, that would really put them in the right frame of mind. Remember, they've suffered a lot of losses of late. Dijinsky misses. Utah rebounds and runs and holds it up. 30 Ravena staying in front. Oh, dangerous pass. Kawamura tries to get it to Soto. No, he passes to Utah. Here's Oliver. Another 3 of 10. Count that. And Yokohama have gone back in front. 36 34. Excellent work, and Oliver just playing really, really well in this sequence. Got to take those jumpers with confidence. He's definitely somebody that can carry a team. Just the overall energy that he brings. Look at this. Finds his open spot, and 30 Ravana decides, I'm not going to get out too close and foul him. Pulls up. And Oliver just has no problem knocking it down. Great comeback by Yokohama. Well, there we have the answers, the ankle. And if that's the case for Sasaki, I maybe would not be surprised if we didn't see him for the rest of the weekend. But then again, if it's a real problem, it seems like they would want to keep the swelling down in case it starts to, so I don't know, maybe he's aggravated a problem and ice isn't required. Cody Clark posting up Kawamura. He turns outside Hosokawa. And another offensive rebound. Ball whipped down low. How about you? Who saw that coming? Yokohama actually out-rebounding him at this stage by one, surprisingly. Pass to the corner, Sudo dribbles in. No foul called on Hosokawa as Sudo loses the ball. Now Hosokawa for three. Oh boy, that is a big sequence. That will frustrate Coach Aoki. Here's Kawamura, gets it to go. And back to a one point deficit for Yokohama. And that means also with 30.6 seconds left, they'll have a chance to get the basketball back. They'd like to get it back after a stop.
Almost picked off and taken the other way. Or again. Ah, that's big. Boy, that really hurts. Carl Murray gets it. He's got to go quick. Final seconds ticking off the clock. Puts up a prayer. And Soto Ura with the three-pointer. They haven't made many. Gets that one to drop. And Santa Nia Phoenix, again, Cody Clark doing a good job finding his teammate open who doesn't hesitate. Just the fourth three of the day for Santa New Phoenix, and they go up 42 to 38 at halftime. さあ、それではビーローズのハーフタイムショーをお届けします。皆さん本日のビーローズの印象にぜひご注目ください。Okay girls, it's the Beatles halftime show. Thank you, B. Rose. Suzuki to a swing back jamming no performance. This Kokunai Gai no club jazz scene will carry through dance creators. Stax Groove, Daikyo, Izumi. Kuritsuke Institute's dance project. Swing back jamming this 
今回のため様々なシーンで活躍するダンサーが集結していますメンバーは Red Bull Dance 出演 SNS フォロワーなんと10万人 Pop and Shiru UK Jazz Real and Yuki Dance Attack 全国大会優勝 Bebop and Breakin Style You to M Manato Wack 実力派の桜子 House Me Ona Hip Hop から Bad Swing Taiwan 出身 We Need a Soul Set Q Made us So let's go Let's go Let's go Let's go ここからは来場者全員。
全員に当たる事前応募企画プレゼンテッドバイトレタテネットビーコルの29点目を決めるのは誰だの当選者発表です本日29得点目を決めたのは背番号1番ジェロード・ユトフ選手ですさあ今日はどのくらいの方の予想が当たったのでしょうかえ予想が的中した方の中から抽選で3名様に豪華賞品が当たりますさあ今日の豪華賞品はこちら北海道産いくら醤油漬けですおいしそうご飯が何杯でも食べられそうですねさあご当選されたの方には後日メールにてご連絡いたしますのでどうぞ楽しみに明日もぜひ予想して豪華商品ゲットしてください以上プレゼンテッドバイトレタテネットビーコルの29点目を決めるのは誰だの当選者発表でした
Well, San Diego Phoenix and Yokohama B Corsairs taking on each other today here on the Corsairs home court. And it's been a very interesting game. Corsairs looking like uh, they're going to have a good start. Just they did, went up by 10 points or 8 points, only to then allow their opponents to reel off 17 unanswered points. At which point, Yokohama then recovered, came back to take the lead only right at the end of the half for the visitors to uh, get their noses back in front, getting a big three-pointer from Sota Ura. But this is the action. Sota with nine points, he's hit three threes, eight for Devin Oliver. For Yokohama, meanwhile, Hosokawa coming out and making some plays. Third to Ravana. Nice spin. Thirty has just that those two points so far, so look for him to pick it up a little bit in the second. Meanwhile, Kawamura whipping the pass down low to Oliver. Two of his nine points. Then Oliver hitting that three. You can see that San In not wanting to give away any lobs to Kai Soto, which is where Yokohama have been hurting some opponents. And that means they're going to have to hit some jump shots. But Hosokawa again hitting the three. So he's got seven points. In fact, he's only one of three from deep. I thought he had two. So one of them must have been on the line. And this is the last three of... The last points, in fact, of the first half, and it was a three-pointer from Sota Aura. So, you look at the, the numbers, two more threes have been made by Yokohama, and I think, uh, you know, that's probably a department where they have to be even more prolific. Inside the arc, five more makes for San and Neo Phoenix, showing their, perhaps, Superiority inside and it surprises me that Yokohama are actually out rebounding San and New Phoenix, but they are 26 25 Then you've got some some other important statistics points off turnovers just three for the home team 10 for San in so that really illustrates how you can't afford to turn the basketball over against San and New Phoenix and have a chance to win today pseudo got hot hit three of four from deep in that one stretch. He's got nine points, seven points, five rebounds, five assists for Cody Clark. So he's uh, on his way to a triple-double today, it seems. Oliver has six rebounds to go with his nine points as well. And Kawamura with the team high in assists. Six assists to go with his six points. And Yamauchi sent in uh, Reserve guard with three fouls. The only player in foul trouble. Okay, so now the ankle has been taped up. And he is not he's not gonna come back today. So they lose Sasaki. And that's uh, it's never good to lose a starter. Meanwhile, Matt Suzaki, the only player with two fouls for Yokohama. So no real foul trouble to speak of for either team other than Yamauchi. So Yamauchi's foul trouble and you lose Sasaki. So maybe a factor down the stretch, but I don't think so. Not when you've got 30 Ravana and Sota Ura and also Hosokawa playing so well. Although Hosokawa, not a ball handler. Coach Aoki drawing up some plays here before the start of the second half. Look at this crowd. I mean, you're talking about a crowd coming out and supporting a team that basically it's wild card, wild card hopes are on a respirator. And that just tells you how much, what a strong connection Yokohama have uh, forged with their fans. So they really back them through thick and thin, through good times and bad.
And we're underway. Yokohama trying to score quickly. Homer denied. Now 30 Ravenna drives in. Oh, what a spectacular finish from 30 Ravenna. Reverse left-handed with a little bit of English. Using the backboard, and it's a, a tail of two drives. And Santa and Nia Phoenix go up by six. And that was one of the more spectacular plays of the game. And a problem that this Yokohama B Corsairs team has had today has been turning the basketball over. Six turnover. I mean, it's not a huge problem, but the, the turnovers have have cost them. Here's Cody Clark. And nice rebound from Jared Utah. So Utah with five rebounds, and now the foul called on 30 Ravena. And Soto, oh boy, Soto simply cannot afford to miss that shot. He is right there at the basket. Even if Mayton is uh, not allowing him to dunk it, he's got to make it. He's got to have the touch. Soto Ora pulls up at the elbow, knocks it down. Utah. Nice pass. Boy, it just feels like Utah is just not going to sh shoot today. It's almost as if he's under instructions to pass. Thurder Ravana has it knocked out of his hands by Kawamura, who thought he had it clean, but free throw is coming for Ravana. And probably, unless you're calling the foul for the hand, the left hand on the 30 Ravena body, that's a clean block. And as they say, ball don't lie. Third Ravena makes the second. Oliver gets it down low to Soto. Got to get the big man involved and let him get into positions where he can score. Hosokawa back to Mayton. Mayton goes right into Sudo and falls down, able to save it into the hands of 30 Ravena. Aura, oh, avoids the foul, puts it up, and a push down low, and the foul called. It'll stay at this end. That miss, Utah with another rebound. Soto, looked like he was trying to do a Euro step. And Mayton, now he hustled to the other end. He's claiming his goal interference that the ball went off the backboard before Kai Soto blocked it. They're going to have a look. 
They're going to count it. And the push, so an and one coming. Okay, watch. Well, you'd have to look from a different angle to see if that was a good call. It was very close. Here's the bounce pass, and Oliver just goes right up and lays it in. Great pass from Kawamura. Ora drives, hands it off to Mayton. So timeout, Yokohama, they're going to try to push the reset button. So, two fouls on Kawamura, 10 point lead, still well within striking distance. We saw them come back in the first half. Well, left wide open, but Sugiota can't knock it down, rims out. He is 0 for 5 from three point range today. Foul called on Yokohama. So Sugiura picks up his first personal. Use in the game. Here's Mayton, and Mayton uses the glass. It's about as good a defense as you can have on that play. He just made the shot, 13 points. Good job, Yanti Mayton. Oh boy, Mayton steps out, guards. Pseudo doing it on both ends of the floor right now. Yanti Mayton forces the turnover. Cody Clark. Another three-pointer, biggest lead of the game, 15 points for San and Nia Phoenix up at the top of the Central Conference. Central Division and looking every bit the team that 
could go on a deep playoff run. Kyle Murrah steps back, misses. Yokohama finding the points hard to come by. Being outscored 15. 15 to 4 in this third quarter. Dzinski back in the game. So it doesn't get any easier. It's San in bringing their valuable sixth man. 30 Ravana, meanwhile, gets it to Dzinski. And a foul called as Yokohama try to cope. See, Kai King is just not going to be able to contend with Dzinski. So Dzinski gets a little friendly roll and takes it up to a 16-point lead. Both free throws make it 17. The advantage. And Yokohama, familiar territory here, facing a big deficit. Yo, they get Kawamura and he misses badly again from deep. And up ahead it goes. And the flush for you, who's been good today, coming off the bench in limited minutes. Soto Ura just really solid point guard, knows exactly what he's doing. Another timeout, Yokohama. Seven assists for Sota Ura. Look at this. Good catch, you. Doesn't even bounce it. Doesn't even dribble. It's been one of his better games that I've seen. You, still young as you can see, 22. Bright future. Needs to make the most of his minutes. San In are gonna play Yokohama again tomorrow. Then they'll have one against Shinshu Brave Warriors in midweek. Then Sun Rockers Shibuya, a couple of games next week. Next weekend then Toyoma Grouses. Then the last two games will be against Seahorses Makawa on May 4th and 5th. So you can see them winning most, if not all, of their games the rest of the way. The defense is good. Look at that. Josh Scott, they have to... Get it to Kyle Murrow, settles for a three from about two and a half meters from behind the arc. And you saw the applause from Coach Ono. He's like, hey, listen, guys, we made him work for that shot. And if they have to settle for a three-pointer, two and a half, three meters behind the arc, so be it. Now a chance to run. Kyle Murrow is going to go all the way. Five unanswered points. Well, that was a nice little rally coming out of the timeout. 3.50 remaining. So Coach Ono wanting to disrupt this. Look at this. The defense is solid. I mean, they are making them work, and that's, yeah, two and a half meters behind the arc. And Kyle Murray knocks it down. And then after the quick miss, the quick shot and miss, they're not going to be able to catch up. Sotoro does the right thing, not trying to, to block 
Kawamura and give him a three-point play. Well, the last time these two teams met, Yokohama got the better of San In winning 81 to 76 here. And that was during a difficult spell for San In when they were in the midst of a, a five game losing streak. Uh, but since then, they've been able to get back to winning form. So right now, their lead has been cut to 14. Yanti Mason, a little turnaround. They battle for the rebound. Kalmora picks it up. He goes. He's going to go all the way. Look at this. Takes the foul. And Aura sends him to the line. And the reason why you see Kalmora going like at a breakneck speed there. It's not just that it's in his DNA. He knows he needs to try to get down there and score, get something before that San and Neo defense sets up. That's where they've been really difficult in that half court. Man, Colin Murray makes just one of two. So now a 13 point difference. Look for Dudzinski to break. Nope, it's going to be Sotaura putting up a three. And just like that, that is a rally buster. He's been excellent. He really has. He's got 12 points, Sotaura. Kai King high off the glass. Wow. Sotaura could end up with a triple double himself today. He's got seven assists. 12 points. He's got six rebounds. Now he's dribbling. And if he makes this, but he doesn't, it would have given him 15. But Dzinski with the rebound. That is frustrating. If you're Yokohama, you need to come up with the basketball. Hosokawa off one foot. And that is the direct result of not getting the rebound for Yokohama. And the extra effort pays off for the visitors. Ball stays in bounds. Pseudo attacking. Yanti Maiden steps back for three. That's good. He's got 12. All of his points coming from three-point range. That's not... Surprising, really. That's where he does most of his damage. Okay, so they're going to double check and see if it's a three or if his foot was on the line. Oh, yes. Clearly behind the line. So 13 point difference. 
Yokohama needs stops and they need to get rebounds. And Sotaura drives in. And the ball goes off of Sotaura's hand. He says he was fouled. Now some full court pressure trying to deny Kawamura the basketball. He ends up getting it. The crowd re-energized by this comeback attempt. There's Josh Scott goes in. He's blocked from behind by Dzinski. And you just have to be really strong going up. And that's just further evidence really that Josh Scott not 100%. Drive, oh, goes off the hands of Kai King and out of bounds. Another turnover. Maybe a little too much zip on that basketball. Kawamura is going to sit down perhaps for the remainder of the quarter unless they get the ball back. The final minute, Kintomori comes in. Also, Cody Clark's going to come back in for Dzinski. And Yamauchi plays for the first time in the second half with his three fouls. And kind of a late whistle, a foul called on Kenta Mori, and that's a big one because it puts Sandin on the free throw line. That's unfortunate. So Yamauchi tries to bank in the first one and misses. So that foul could end up doing a favor for Yokohama getting in the ball back. I don't think he'll miss two. Let's see if the bank is open on this one. Yes, it is. Oh boy, Sudo taking the quick shot from the corner. Cody Clark drifts in. Scott rebounds. Now Mori. And this is where Utah ordinarily would be looking more for his shot than he than he is. Fortunate to get it back. Good hands, Yamauchi. Jared Utah today has been so reluctant to shoot the basketball. It, it really is almost as if somebody has said, don't shoot it. He's only taken one shot. And you take away his option. Look at Kentamori sneaking in, getting the <laughs> What a play from Kentamori. And that's the one I was talking about at the start of the game. It just seems to be so much more confident right now. The ball is turned over, and then he comes up and gets the steal, layup, and a chance for a three-point play. Wow. That is terrific play from the captain. Does not make the three-point, the free throw. So it's a 12-point game. And Kentamori does not want to foul like he did on the previous trip down the floor. Sat in. Yamauchi puts it up in the lane and makes it. And that is painful. Kai King lets it fly. But once again, last points of the quarter scored by Sat in. Yamauchi. Takes it to a 69-55 lead for San and Neo Phoenix over Yokohama B Corsairs. Ten minutes remaining.
Ten minutes remaining, separating San and Nia Phoenix from another win, their 42nd of the season. But let's see if Yokohama B Corsairs can uh, spoil the party. And the whistle blows before the shot. Foul called. Yanti Maiten. <laughs> so Kenta Mori, who had that big steal and bucket right late in the third quarter. Now Utah. Oh boy. They have called a travel on Utah. And it looked like he was fouled by Cody Clark. I'm not surprised Coach Aoki is a little bit frustrated with that. And then Hosokawa misses the three. They tried to rub salt in the wound with a quick three. Doesn't work. Here's Utah finally lets one fly. Plus a cow again, this time makes it. And back to a 17 point lead. Nine minutes remaining, 11 for Hosekawa. Who on balance has been pretty good today. Now the question is can they respond with a three? It feels like they have to kind of keep pace. Kintamori, Kai Soto coming back into the game. I don't know what the, with Kai Soto, he sits for long spells, and here he is coming off the bench. He gets it, and he's looking for a foul. Whistle doesn't blow. Ferdy Ravena, however, his fellow Gilas man is fouled by Kyle Murrah. I suppose, really, with, with Kai Soto, maybe the big challenge for him is just to work on his upper body strength maybe you don't want to just lift weights and lose your flexibility you want to you want to maintain that wiriness that makes him effective but at the same time you have to put on some weight to be able to play against guys like Mayton look at this and Mayton has just been trash talking him all game long so that's the other thing with with Kai Soto. You want to let your play do your talking, but you also want to talk a little bit as well. That's my opinion. Because Yanti Mathen has been talking. Kawamura lets it fly in, uh, right at the end of the shot clock. So 19-point lead. Kai Soto has only played about 14 minutes today, and it was the same against Ibaraki last weekend. Now he's looking a little tired, and I don't know if he has an issue with his, maybe he hasn't been feeling well, because he has played a lot more minutes in other games and scored and rebounded. And Cody Clark is, uh, well, maybe he hasn't given up on the idea of a triple-double. In fact, he's already got 13 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. And that's, I think it would be a quiet triple double for him. It doesn't feel like he's been that influential, but boy, has he ever. The stats don't lie. The timeout for Yokohama, the team down by 21. And again, you know, for, for Yokohama, you've got Kai Soto. Uh, you look at San and Neo Phoenix, they're leading scores, and you've got Mayton and Clark. Aura's been terrific. I mean, everybody has, really, in that team. Um, and whether it's fair or not, for Kai Soto, you are the starting center for Yokohama, which is a big responsibility, a big opportunity. 
for him. And he has to be able to hold his own against the big guys, you know, that he comes up against. And I would suggest that maybe it's not fair where, where he is lacking is the fact that he doesn't have the same support that these other guys have. It's just Kai Soto. I mean, he's Josh Scott clearly not the player that he once was. Devin Oliver's not a not a four, not a power forward. You know, it's it's uh, Utah would be, and he's played well in spurts today. He's got six rebounds, two assists, but it's nothing like Yanti Maton at the other end, who has Cody Clark and Dzinski coming in and, and giving him support. So it's kind of the Kai Soto show or, or not or nothing really on that front line for Yokohama. And nothing against Scott. He's been good in his career. Uh, but clearly not the same player right now. And maybe he will be next year. But it looks like he's kind of on the downward trend. And I think, I think with Utah, they probably expected more from him this season. Here he is fouled from behind by 30 Ravena. And that's the only thing I could think about him not taking shots today. It's almost as if somebody said, hey, Jared, you got to let some other guys put him up because you're not making your shots. Kyle Moore missing. Kentamori tying up Cody Clark. I like Cody Clark. He's he's pretty, uh, he just kind of, if a call doesn't go his way, he's not going to complain about it. And that's a good no call. That's a good, good job again by Kenta Mori, not giving up on the basketball. Nice play. Kenta Mori, Utah sneaks in, gets the bucket. Nice, almost another steal by Kenta Mori. Yokohama are going to go for it. They have to go for it. They've got all these people here cheering for them. Not to mention the fact they need to win out, really, to have a chance to get the wild card. Thirty Ravena blocked by Josh, uh, by Kai Soto, rather. Excuse me. Look at Yamauchi dive for the ball. What a leader. His team's up 20 points. He's playing defense like his life depends on it. He's diving after the basketball. That is a great sign for San and Neo Phoenix. Yamauchi is a player that essentially leads by example. Here's the pass. Kentamori into the paint. Kawamura for three. Timeout. Fifteen for Yuki Kawamura, twelve for Sudo, ten for Oliver, nine for Soto, and eight for Kai King.
Uh, Utah averaging 12.9 points, 7.4 rebounds this season. So below his averages, there is the miss. Oliver with the rebound. Well, it's close to his average in rebounds, in fact. He's scoring. Here he is. Goes right at you. Good defense, you. Now Soto, shot clock winding down. And Oliver misses. Soto, good effort on the boards. And Yanti Maton races down the floor. And the foul called. Not sure on who. Yeah, clearly on Oliver. There's a drive. Here's Utah on the break. Osakawa, another jumper, takes it back up to a 20 point lead. And Soto catches it, goes up for the dunk. The big Gilas man. So time out on the floor. Soto with the flush. Three-point shot, Sudo right out of the timeout, making it a 15-point game. Last roll of the dice for Yokohama to see if they can come back. And Maiden gets swatted, but gets the foul call, and then he tumbles into the cameraman or the camera operator. Need to help up that young man. <laughs> Devin Oliver knows these guys. He goes and checks on them. So as Maiden goes to the line, yeah, back to Utah. So last season with Kyoto Hanneris, he averaged 17.2 points per game. 
And his number's not quite as good this year, about five points less per game. Before that, he was with Makawa, and he averaged 12.8. So he's kind of returned more to that form. And um, it's just hard to say, really, when they built this team, did they envision him being more of a three-point threat? Because I think they did. He hasn't shot quite as well as he did last year from deep. Here's Kai Soto. Ah. Turns it over. That's all Yante Maton. And I think that's I think that's strength right there. That's Yante Maiden. Just not giving an inch on defense. And Kai Soto, while he can handle the ball against a player like Yante Maiton, he wants to catch it closer to the basket. Here's Yanti Mason going up. Denied this time. Utah rebounds and runs. Clock is the enemy. Pseudo fouled by you from behind the arc. Good, smart play by number 30. Felt the hands on him. Went up and made sure he was going to the line. Now he's got to make some free throws. But you've been good today. I think... Uh, Coach, I think uh, Coach Ono is going to be pleased. He's got four points, two rebounds, played some good defense. Not in this instance. And Sudo makes all three, gets it back to a 14-point game with just under four minutes remaining. Well, never say never. Clock is definitely the enemy at this point. So really, if you're saying in, you're in no rush to put shots up. You want to take some time off on every possession unless a wide-open layup presents itself. Ooh, and I oh, and they call the foul on Sudo. Thought they had the double team. Look at this. That's just a tough call on Sudo. He's in pretty good position there, I think. Let's put it this way. He's trying to make a play on defense. And I'm not sure he could have done any more there unless he sagged. But the referee felt like he was getting too much body on Dzinski, who, even though he kind of turned with his elbows up, I mean, he was clearly not trying to make contact. And Soto Ura says, was that ball not in? 15 points, the difference. So it wasn't a horrible foul if they could score here. The handoff to Soto goes up. He's fouled. Ends up being a good foul because they get it right back. They go up, and Soto scores. And a little bit of a, a waking up party here for Soto late in the game. Nice pump fake. Even a player of his size, Soto, he needs, he needs that pump fake against these big, strong teams. And especially with Mayton not in the game, it's a little bit easier for him to have some success. So he gets it back to a 12-point game, and you can see that he's got a little extra bounce in his step. Sotora, Cody Clark, you don't want to leave him open. Oh, drives in. Good rebound, Soto. And good play. Oliver, knowing Soto Ura with those quick hands, was right there, ready to pick it and go the other way. And what's not good about this, stopping the clock. Saying they didn't want to keep that clock running. 
So they're really doing they're really doing these guys a favor. Oh boy. That is just not a free throw you can miss when you're down 12 with just under three and a half minutes remaining. So they give him another free throw and he misses still. He had made his free throw on his previous trip. Well, that just wasn't the Devin Oliver that we know. Now he's coming up trying to get a steal from 30 Ravenna. I think he's angry with himself, but he's taking it out on the riff. So even though the foul was called, if he misses this, it will not have been ruinous. But Yokohama can't spurn any more opportunities if they want to come from behind. Oh boy, Devin Oliver trying to get it to Soto. Totoro goes down. A little theatrical. He's going to be helped up. Yeah, it's a little theatrical. Well, they want to see if it's an unsportsmanlike. I don't think so. Well, Sotoro has been getting it done all day long and uh, just putting a nail in the coffin with that free throw. He's got 12 points, 10 assists. He's just probably not going to get the rebounds for the triple-double. He's still got six. Cody Clark just needs two assists to get a triple-double. He's got 10 rebounds to go with his 13 points. Sudo rebounds it. Ball knocked out of bounds. Well, Soto Ura seems pretty convinced it's going to be their ball, and it is. And the problem is, if you bring the ball down like that with Soto Ura close by, you know he's going to be stealing it or knocking it away. Now, we got a head, head coach's challenge. 
may as well use it. Yeah, that's off of Soto. So they got it right. Coming out, and Cody Clark doesn't get it, but there is Mayton with the offensive rebound and put back. Soto fouled. He's got an in one coming. Soto makes the free throw. Yamauchi, they got to go quick, and they get it across. Foul before the shot. Cody Clark keeps the faint hopes alive of Yokohama. Makes a second for a 14 point lead. Remember, Santa in already locked in first place in the Central Division. And Yokohama, who made the playoffs last year, well, there's a little lob to Devin Oliver. Make it a 12 point game, not over yet. Clark takes a deep, banks it in. And now the turnover, Yamauchi has it.
Dzinski lets it fly right at the end. The shot clock with 112 remaining. Fouls on Dzinski. So Kai Soto back to the free throw line. Well, he's going to end up with a big game points wise. He's got 18, he's got nine rebounds. A lot of his damage coming here late. Well, coming in the fourth quarter. 19 points. And Oro does the right thing, just takes time off the clock. And ends up taking a long three. Oliver, they got to go quick. He gets it to Kawamura. The lob and Soto goes upstairs for the dunk. Ten point difference. Now they got to get fouls. If they can't get steals. But they're just going to play it to the end, it appears. Get it as close as possible. There's Soto Oro, that's his spot. Misses this time. Chance to go. Another bucket, perhaps. Here's another lob. Nice finish. Boy, Kai Soto's going to finish with a nice looking stat line. And it will end up being an eight point difference. So 90 to 82, San and Neo Phoenix. Win it over Yokohama B. Corsairs. San and New Phoenix continuing their march towards the championship, towards the playoff championship. 90 to 82, that third quarter really was decisive for them. They led 42-38 at halftime and then came out and just really laid the wood to Yokohama who couldn't get anything going. They're able to win without Sasaki. Who got hurt early on. So Yokohama played, played hard, played with pride, but ultimately not enough against a better team today. And the better team was San and Neo Phoenix. These two teams will play again tomorrow, tipping off 2.05 local time. Yanti Maton, 19 points, 7 rebounds. Cody Clark, 16 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. Sota Aura, 14 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds. David Dzinski, 10 points, 6 rebounds. And Hosekawa had a nice game. Made four threes, finished with 14 points, had four rebounds. But I really felt like for the majority of the game, it was that battle between Mayton and Kai Soto. Mayton just wouldn't give anything away. And then you had Dzinski coming in off the bench and really making life miserable as well for that front court of Yokohama. So the Santa New Phoenix fans that have traveled to support their team today, full of smile. Well, I don't see too many smiles. Perhaps uh, full of quiet happiness, reserved happiness, almost as if they knew they were gonna get the win.
So again, this team is getting it on tomorrow. サイエンネオフェニックスオーノアツシヘッドコーチです。コーチ水曜日地区優勝を決めた後変わらず今日も素晴らしいゲームでした。今の気持ち聞かせてください。はい、あの夜もことなくいいあの地下準備していいゲーム
on him. Really hard defense on him. Still have a game tomorrow, so we'll put this one behind us and come out and play, and uh, please keep supporting us. Thank you very much. So here's a look back at the highlights. Sudo had it going early. He had a spell where he hit three of four from deep. Kawamura doing Kawamura things with his passing. Finished with 13 assists, 15 points. Kai Soto finished with 23 points, nine rebounds. And Oliver had 12 points, 10 rebounds, four assists, but too much at this end, especially giving away some of these shots. And also Yokohama hurt themselves. Their turnovers, they really, uh, they got punished. Giving up 16 points off the turnovers. And that just, you can't, you can't try to get an upset even if you're at home. You can't get an upset if you're, if you're giving the other team easy buckets. But that's not to say anything about their effort because they tried. But you just feel like there's a, a gulf in talent between these two teams right now. And as good as Kawamura is, and he is good, and probably still easily one of the best players in the B League, the backcourt is deep enough and good enough, led by that man right there, Soto Ura, for San and New Phoenix to come out and uh, make life difficult for you in that backcourt. So then it comes down to Soto going up against Mayton. And the numbers, I don't feel like, tell the real story. Soto's numbers look better, but I think Yante Mayton just really kind of neutralized Kai Soto for the majority of this game until the fourth quarter. And then Yante Mayton finished with 19 points himself. He had the seven rebounds. And Cody Clark went about his business. He's so good, so smooth. Does it quietly and almost gets a triple-double. And Hugh came out. Getting the dunk on the breakaway. So Colin Murray in the end finished three of 10 from three point range. Here he is scoring on the break when they had a little run. Still hopes of a comeback. But then that was really the backbreaker right there. That kind of put pay to that last rally, that three pointer from Soto Ura. He finished just two of eight from three-point range, but every shot he hit was big. And Hosokawa also coming off the bench today with four three-pointers. So this was late in the contest. And Kai Soto racking up the points. Sudo making another three. He ended up hitting five threes today. And, but again, Cody Clark missing that, but mate in there for the putback. And that's where you got to be present. You got to be, you got to be strong on the boards. So it, it was uh, 90 to 82. Maybe the final score flatters Yokohama a little bit. They were pretty decisively beaten, I felt like. Eighteen to thirty-two inside the arc, Yokohama, and twenty-three to thirty-nine, almost sixty percent for San In. And again, it, it's hard to get your head around it. Yokohama with those forty-six rebounds to forty-five for San In, and eleven offensive rebounds for both. It just felt like San In were a little bit more productive there. But the points off turnover, sixteen scored for San In near finish, just five for Yokohama B Corsairs. 
and the 13 turnovers compared to just four turnovers for San Antonio. So they didn't really get any pressure on the guards. I mean, some of the some of the turnovers for Yokohama were what I would say were unforced or self-inflicted. So that is the numbers. Twenty-three for Soto led all scores. Nineteen for Mayton, ten rebounds for both Oliver and Clark. And Kawamura had the, the game high thirteen assists. The ten assists for Soto Aura. So from an assist standpoint, there were twenty-five assists for Yokohama and just twenty-one for San In. So there are a lot of a lot of stats kind of go against the grain of thinking. You would have thought San In would have been far superior in some of these rebounding and assist stats, but they were not. Uh, Sudo finished with 18 points. Karma 15. Oro had 14 points. Clark, 16. And again, Yante Mathan led San In Neo Phoenix with his 19 points. Yante averages 15.3 points per game. So... We already talked about this game, too, tomorrow. There at the bottom on the left column, starting at 2 of 5 local time, and those are the rest of the games. Take your pick about which one interests you the most. Uh, but Hokkaido did win their game today, so that was perhaps a little bit of a surprise. Might want to keep your eye on that one. Going up against the already crowned champions regular season anyway beating Utsunomiya Bricks in the east anyway that's it folks you've been watching the B-League thanks for watching again we'll see you next time